the NBA has one of the better trade deadlines in sports, and not necessarily because anything's going to happen, but it's just a great excuse to talk about the state of the league. And if you're a team like the 76ers or the Heat, you really have to make a serious assessment of your team. Like, where do you stand before Thursday's trade deadline at 3 Eastern? Are you one move away? The Heat are looking at Kyle Lowry. The 76ers looking at Kyle Lowry. Where do you stand with the Nets? Where do you stand with the Lakers? What kind of shape are the Lakers in? When's Anthony Davis back? How's, how long is LeBron going to be out? What position are they going to be in, seating-wise? Uh, Kevin Durant, when's he come back? And then there's always the question of Kyrie Irving. And we've seen deals that, prove to be really important when it comes to winning a championship. Pal Gasol and Rasheed Wallace come to mind. They were traded around this time, eventually helped win titles. I don't know if that's going to happen with Aaron Gordon or Kyle Lowry, but it's still a great time to gear up and get excited about the rest of the NBA season. And I know that we rank, I try not to, but others rank who's your MVP right now. And we might find out, that Joel Embiid by not playing is the MVP or LeBron not playing is the real MVP. There's a chance that Lonzo Ball is going to get traded. Could be to Philadelphia if they don't get Kyle Lowry. Could be the Clippers. Could be uh, another team in there. And I, I'm, I'm negative towards, you know, LeVar Ball because dad never really accomplished anything as an athlete, but he wants to ride his son's coattails and he wants to tell you how much he knows about basketball and he could beat Michael Jordan one-on-one. You know, he just doesn't shut up and let his, let his kids play. And I will say this about Lonzo Ball. I was critical of him. I love him as a player, but I'm critical of him when it comes to that open jumper. You could see him freeze. And he has to work on this. How he did not work on this, I'll never know. But he has worked on this to improve his game. He's a good player. And if, he's, if he can get past that mental hurdle, he's going to be a, a, a very valuable player. Now, he's overshadowed by his ball, uh, brother, but, and rightfully so. Uh, but Lonzo has put in the work to become a better player. And usually when you get to the pros, you don't always get that with players. Sometimes you get there and then you stop. He he's worked on this. He understands the game. He plays defense. He rebounds. He passes. uh, But he needed to improve. And he has like he is. He's a legitimate shooter now. Not great. Not even very good. Maybe not even good. But just be consistent. If you can get him, you know, in the 43, 44 percent range, and you could get maybe 35 36% from three-point range. He just needs to be a weapon. And as much as I'm critical of his father, uh, I, you know what his two sons that are in the NBA have done, they, they are really good players. Yeah, Paul. Dan, his stats are way up. He's 23 years old. His rookie year, he shot 36%. He's up to 43%, which is serviceable. His three-point percentage is now at 39%. Again, mm. that's... That's not bad I'll at all. I'll take that. I'll That's not bad at all. And he's shooting eight threes a game. He's starting to become a little bit of a volume guy. His free throw percentage, it was, was 45% as a rookie, 41% his second year, is up to 77%. Again, 77%, you can play point guard in the league. All I want, yes, because I can't have you be my point guard. I, I, I can't have my point guard uh, as a liability. I have to take him out at the end of games. I just can't have that. But 77%, I will take all of those numbers. He just has to continue to, you know, have those grow. Yeah, McLevin. But you watch him play. His guy is on Zion. Of course he's shooting 38% from three. He's never covered. He's an automatic double team on Zion because of him. So I don't know. because I'm scouting him for my Sixers. Is that enough of a three-point? I know he's much better, but is that still enough to win a title when your lead guards? Well, the Sixers aren't a three-point shooting team. Right, so why add him? I feel like they need a shooter. That's what I was sort of wondering. Well, I wondered about J.J. Redick because they're going to buy him out, it looks like, and then Redick could go back to Philadelphia. But, you know, Mannix will know about this. I just think Lonzo Ball sort of got left, left behind. He's only 23, but he's a valuable player. And at that, he sees the floor. I mean, they're just players who understand the game. I mean, I'm watching yesterday – with, uh, you know, Caitlin Clark, she sees the floor. That's all. She sees the game differently than other people do. Uh, 
and and there are a lot of players who are capable of doing that. It's just Lonzo is able to do that. LaMelo is able to do that. They see the floor. Their head is up. When they're dribbling, they're always looking, 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 looking. And I, I just wanted to make mention of that. He might be traded. Looks like he's going to be traded. I don't think he's staying in New Orleans. Uh, his dad, of course, got involved in this and said that uh, he's got to get out of New Orleans. You know, I bet you let your son speak for themselves. And if he's gone someplace else, I do think he'll be a valuable addition to somebody come playoff time.